This video is going to give you things that you can do to make sure that you don't gain weight or get fat when you're stuck at home. Perfect for people that work from home or perfect for people that are currently stuck at home. Point is, everything I'm going to lay out for you is going to be something that you can do. No equipment needed, no fancy food needed, nothing expensive. Super simple hacks that are going to make it so you don't gain weight when you're stuck at home. All right, let's go ahead and let's jump right in. But before I do start, can you please hit the red subscribe button? if you wanna see my daily videos, but also hit the bell icon and make sure you select all notifications, not personalized notifications, because that way you will get notified whenever I post a new video daily so you never miss out. All right, let's go ahead and jump right in. The first thing that I want you to do is if you're stuck at home and you can't get to the gym, but you still need something quick and easy to do, do upper body high intensity interval training. Okay, and what I mean by that is instead of going and doing a bunch of high knees or doing a bunch of sprints or doing a bunch of you know, things like that, utilize the upper body. You're gonna get your heart rate up higher and you're gonna get more bang for the buck in terms of your time. In fact, the Brazilian Journal of Physical Therapy had published a study that found there's a pretty dramatic increase in sympathetic nervous system activity when you do upper body hits. So we're talking about things like battle ropes, uh, even things like burpees without the jump. Even things like plyometric push-ups, where you're just doing push-ups fast and kind of bouncing with them. Point is, if you get that upper body moving, you're gonna generate more of what is called peripheral vascular resistance. Okay, the upper body doesn't have the capacity to handle as much rapid blood flow. So it gets the heart rate up a little bit higher. And quite honestly, that's exactly what we want when we want a little bit more bang for the buck. So just do like 20, 30 seconds on, and then like 40 seconds off. 20 seconds on, 40 seconds off of some kind of upper body movement. I recommend investing in some battle ropes or just a light kettlebell to do some swings. This next one is kind of an obvious one and it's kind of a simple one, but I'm gonna throw it out there anyway. Every waking hour, drop and do as many push-ups as you possibly can. Sounds cheesy, and I know a lot of people do the push-up challenge on Instagram, but there's a reason behind doing every hour. We wanna constantly be shifting our body between aerobic and anaerobic mode. When we're stuck at home, we're largely in the aerobic mode, and we wanna make sure that our cells and our mitochondria are conditioned to switch back and forth between aerobic, where you're just kind of low intensity, and somewhat high intensity, anaerobic, where you're doing push-ups. So just trust me on that. Even if it's just 10 push-ups every hour, it makes a difference. The next thing is adding apple cider vinegar to every meal when you're stuck at home. Okay, when you're not stuck at home, I would usually say, hey, go ahead and just have apple cider vinegar with breakfast or on an empty stomach or something like that, right? But in this case, I want you to leverage the acetic acid that's in apple cider vinegar because it does something really unique at a genetic level. You see, it helps activate something known as PPAR alpha, which is a unique protein in the body that helps the body liberate more fatty acids from the stored tissue and use them properly for fuel. So in essence, if you do go into a caloric deficit, your body's gonna be more efficient at utilizing that fuel, at least per some specific studies. Now additionally, here's what happens when you consume apple cider vinegar. When it enters a cell, the acetic acid, it gets converted into something called acetyl coenzyme A. Now I know you might not be a science nerd, but let me just enlighten you with what that means. When acetic acid gets turned into acetyl coenzyme A, it essentially robs the body of an energy molecule, ATP. And what that means is for a brief moment in time, the body goes into sort of an energy deficit, which signals something called AMPK to get activated. Basically, the body says, oh, wait a minute, there's a deficit for a second. So it signals a specific response in the body to start liberating fats again into the bloodstream, which is exactly what we want when we're just hanging out at home. This next one is one that I recommend you do whenever possible, but it's easy when you're stuck at home. Have a little bit of cinnamon or a cinnamon capsule with every meal as well. Cinnamon contains something known as methyl hydroxy chalcone polymer, which sounds just like a totally nerdy term because quite frankly it is, but what it does in your body is nothing nerdy at all. It's pretty awesome. You see, it mimics insulin. What that means is when you consume cinnamon, the body assumes that you consumed carbohydrates, so it acts like insulin. So what that means is the carbohydrates that you did consume go into the cell a lot easier without the taxation on the pancreas. That also means that your blood sugar is gonna get lower. What that means is you're not going to have that roller coaster ride of blood sugar rises and falls, right? That is what makes you hungry. And when you're at home, you already have the mental block, that men or I shouldn't say block, but almost that mental sort of uh, activation where you just want to eat. So the blood sugar spikes only make that worse. You might as well keep your blood sugar low, then you don't crave nearly as much. This next one is a really cool hack and one of my personal favorites, and it comes directly out of the European Journal of Clinical Nutrition. We've all heard of MCT oil before, but there's also like MCT oil powders and things like that. Well, MCTs, per the European Journal of Clinical Nutrition, 
actually increase your resting energy expenditure. They increase your resting metabolic rate when you just sit down and do nothing. They can increase it by up to 5%. So this study took a look at subjects that consumed either MCTs or long chain fats, regular fats, and a couple different variations in between. Well, they found when they had a little bit of MCT throughout the course of the day, their resting energy expenditure increased 5%. Why? Because MCTs absorb so fast that it actually triggers a little shock to the body. It's like they absorb so quick that the body goes, whoa, 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 what's going on? And it triggers the release of adrenaline, which therefore liberates fats and upregulates overall metabolism. That is awesome. Now you wanna take this to the next level, combine it with a little bit of protein. Here's what you have to remember. You should be eating as much protein as you can right now while you're sedentary because A, it's not gonna really get converted into fat unless you have a ton of it, but more importantly, 20% of the protein that you consume ends up getting dedicated just to the metabolism of said protein. Protein is hard to digest, so 20% of the calories you get from it just go straight to digestion. So if you combine a little bit of MCT and a little bit of protein while you're sedentary or while you're stuck at home, boom, you've got a great, great solution. If you want my recommendation, I put a link below for Perfect Keto who has a, uh, a collagen. Technically it's a keto collagen, but it's still relatively low fat because the fat that's in it is from MCTs. Plus of course they have a really good solid source of collagen. So highly recommend that. Plus I'm going to make sure that you get a special discount. So there's a link down below in the description that gets you special pricing on Perfect Keto. They are a big supporter of this channel. So thank you Perfect Keto, but also thanks to any of you that also support this channel by utilizing them. So check them out after you finish watching this video because it's definitely something I would recommend adding into your daily ritual during any kind of time that you are stuck at home. This next one is alternate day fasting. Okay, now this is wild stuff because I'm a big proponent of fasting, but I encourage you to look at your fasting a tiny bit different when you're stuck at home. Okay, alternate day fasting has been shown to have some pretty powerful effects. So what alternate day fasting is, is just like it sounds. You go one day of eating normally, and then you go the next day alternate day fasting where you are gonna fast all the way until dinner. So rather than a 16-8 style fast, you're gonna go all the way to like 20, 22 hours. But then you eat whatever you want the other day. It's pretty powerful. The journal Cell Metabolism took a look at 60 people and they divided them into a control group or an alternate day fasting group. They told both groups essentially, eat whatever you want, eat however much you want. Well, it turns out that with the alternate day fasting group, they automatically consumed less calories simply because they well, were fasting one day. However, they were allowed to eat whatever they wanted on the other days. They did tend to over consume a little bit on their eating day, but at the end of four weeks, they lost 7.7 .7 pounds, whereas the other group didn't really lose weight. So alternate day fasting is just a great way to mentally be able to get yourself to get in the game a little bit without having to really think about it. It's so easy. Eat whatever you want one day, alternate day fast the next until dinner. That simple. Another tip right now is going to be consolidating your fats as much as you can to the morning period. Now, this is of course if you're not fasting or on the days that you're not fasting. If you consume most of your fat calories in the morning, you have uh, basically a genetic process in your favor. You have the activation of the expression of what's called PER1. PER1 is an interesting pathway that essentially regulates energy metabolism, but more so regulates uh, the diurnal rhythms that allow us to store or utilize fuel. Now we have a better process of utilizing this fuel in the morning and not storing it negatively. So basically what that means is you can get away with consuming more fat in the morning and not have it go to storage than you could in the afternoon or evening. It's actually somewhat negligible, but I would say if you allocate 25% more of your calories to the morning than you do later in the day, you're actually in better shape in terms of like how your biological clock is actually working. This next one is pretty simple and it's kind of the opposite of what I just talked about while you are somewhat sedentary, just avoid eating later at night. Try to bump everything up one hour. Here's the thing, you have melatonin receptors on your pancreas, so what that means is when it starts to get dark and your body naturally produces the sleep hormone, melatonin, it actually signals the pancreas to sort of chill out. And what that means is that you're going to have a much higher likelihood of becoming insulin sensitive by eating late at night, especially if it becomes a habitual thing over time. So just bump everything up an hour and you'll be fine. Now let's also talk about vitamin C. Okay, vitamin C is gonna be the next one. Now I'm careful not to say to megadose vitamin C, although I will say personally, I like to take a lot of vitamin C. First of all, amazing for the immune system, which we all are concerned with, but also in the case of not gaining weight, it blunts cortisol. So it's also been found that when you are creating lots of cortisol for whatever reason, because you're stressed, you have a higher vitamin C demand. 
So you do want to make sure that you're keeping your vitamin C levels in check so that it can handle the cortisol, but also it's been shown to blunt cortisol a little bit so it can potentially help you out with not storing that fat around the midsection, or at least so some of the studies lead to. Then another thing that you can do, which is something you should be doing, well, quite frankly, as much as you can anyway, but when you're stuck at home, it's way easier to hyperhydrate. As long as you're getting your minerals in, your salt, your magnesium, your potassium, hydrate the heck up. Okay, there are now studies that show that consuming 500 milliliters of water can jack up your metabolism up to 30% within 10 minutes of consuming that water. Whoa, what is going on? Well, researchers think it's largely the stimulation of adrenergic receptors. So what that means is, uh, again, similar to the MCT thing, you're chugging so much water that all of a sudden the beta adrenergic receptors are just like, whoa, what's going on? Shock, upregulate metabolism, upregulate uh, adrenaline, catecholamines, uh, epinephrine, norepinephrine, things like that. And voila, you've got an increase in metabolism. That is a pretty significant increase, 30%. Now, that might be relatively short-lived, but if you stay hydrated all the time, you can see how this could work. Other studies have tried to replicate these exact results, and they're still finding, on average, easily, between three and 5% regularly increase in metabolism. So no matter what, we're looking at at least like a 3% increase in your metabolism. You think about that, what that looks like in calories, that's a lot over the course of a month, right? That's a lot of fat that you could be burning simply by hydrating, and you're at home, so drink a bunch because the bathroom's right there. Who cares? The last one that I want to talk about is adding some macadamia nuts to your meals if you're doing something low carb. If you're not doing low carb, forget the extra calories because quite frankly, the calories are going to cancel out the potential benefit. However, macadamia nuts are super unique because they are one of the only foods that has what is called omega-7, palmitoleic acid. Palmitoleic acid is cool in and of itself, but it works synergistically with omega-3s within the body to regulate insulin sensitivity. So it makes you more insulin sensitive and it can control inflammation. There are some studies that show that it potentially modulates inflammation by like 20%. Now, this is wild stuff in the world of just trying to control inflammation because we don't want to A, get sick, but B, because we're sedentary and we're not moving around as much, which would normally modulate inflammation. So use those macadamia nuts as your source of fat versus other nuts. Now I will say, uh, for immunity's sake, pecans have a ton of antioxidants, so you might want to cycle between macadamia nuts and pecans. But that's just a fun fact. I'll see you in tomorrow's video.